So now that we've looked at how to upload media, um, now we're going to look into how do we actually create a page um, where we add that media into it. Um, so to do that, all you do is go to this plus sign, which is the icon for creating a new page. Um, and this is all it gives you. Um, you can do a lot with this sort of deceptively uh, simple layout. Um, so you'll want to give your page a title. You can give it a description if you'd like. Um, and then you'll add in your text. I'm just going to add random gibberish text just so I have something. Um, and then there's a lot else that can be done here. Uh, firstly, obviously, you have all of your typical like formatting um, buttons here. Um, you can add quotes, you can add um, bullet points and so on. Um, but it's these sort of bluish buttons here that we're going to be using to either insert media or insert widgets um, into our page. Um, so to add an image, you can either have an image that is sort of connected to a piece of text. So for example, if this part of the sentence, I'm talking about that cat image, then I would just highlight it, click on this like play button looking thing, um, and then I'll add that kitten picture. And then I can choose how I want it to look, uh, like where I want it to be placed on the page. If I want it small, medium, large, I'll say medium. I want it on the right hand side and I only want the title because I didn't have a description, but you can include um, any combinations of title, description, metadata, and so on. Okay, um, and then I'm also going to add in that video, but I don't want the video to be connected to any of the text. I want it to just sort of exist on the page. Um, so if I will click on this. It's the play button, but it has like sort of lines behind it. Um, I'm going to click that. The cat video. I want this to be large. I want it to be in the center of the page, and I want the title. Um, and then I'll just add that other image uh, just so we have a page that looks a little bit more realistic. And I'll put this on the left side. Continue. And then I hit save and view at the bottom. And here is our page. So you can see here that where I highlighted the text and then added the media, when you click on this text, it will sort of like, like prompt you to look at the image. Um, whereas here, it just sort of exists in the middle of the page. Um, so that's how you create sort of a basic page. Um, if you'll notice, if I go back to, if I click on, sorry, let me go back. That was too fast. Um, <laughs> if I click on the, the pencil button, um, this pencil button is the one that you click on if you want to edit anything that you've already created. So if I want to edit this page, just click on the pencil button. It will take me back to the editing um, fields. Um, I want to point out a few other things that can be done when you are creating a page. If you go to the bottom here, when you're in the layout tab, uh, right now we're using the basic layout. Um, and it's sort of a misnomer because even though it's called the basic layout, there's like an infinite number of combinations of text and images that you can create. Um, and you can also insert widgets, which I'll explain what those are in a second. Um, and so probably if in most cases, the basic layout is what you'll use for most of your pages. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other layouts that you can sort of play around with. Um, and it's nice because when you click on it, it will kind of show you, it'll give you like a sample of what it's going to look like. So um, there's an image header page, which adds a large image at the top. There's a book splash page, which is what most people use for their very first introduction page, because um, it's just sort of a large image with a title. Um, there's a visual path, which allows, if you want to have sort of a landing page that then allows the 
viewer to see all of the different pages that are within that path, then this is helpful. It's kind of like a scrolling um, list of all of the pages that are within that path. Um, so you can kind of play around with this. There's, you know, if you have a lot of images, you can use a structured media gallery to show all of the images um, that are included within the path. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, options there for you to play around with. I won't go into each and every one of them, but um, they're pretty good about giving a description and how you can customize it. Um, so I do want to show you a few other things about um, uh, widgets. And so widgets are, instead of inserting an image that you have already uploaded into Scalar, uh, you can insert a widget in a similar way. Um, so if you click on these two, the puzzle piece uh, icons, if you click on the one that has the stripes behind it, you can insert into your page any of these widgets. So you can have a timeline, um, you can have a visualization actually of all of the different pages and media that are in your entire Scalar website. Um, this is where you can also add the map. You can add a carousel that allows the viewer to kind of click through images. Um, there's a card icon or a card widget, which I don't think I've ever seen anyone use, um, and a summary that I don't think I've had anyone use, but feel free to try it out and see. Um, if it works for you. So I'm not going to insert, I don't have enough media right now to insert this into my page as it exists, um, but I just wanted to show you um, how you add in a timeline or a map, for example. You can also though, um, you know, if you, if you want the timeline to be sort of the focal point of your page, let's say, you can also select um, a timeline layout, which will put it at the very top of your page and make it the sort of fo the focal point um, if you don't want the timeline to just be inserted somewhere in the middle of your page. Um, let's see. You can also link to like other websites. Um, and then this the little world button here is really nice. You can it's called an iframe. And so if you remember in that example I showed where you could actually um, use Google Maps within that other person's Scalar page, uh, this is how you would do that. You would enter the URL of a website that you want someone to be able to view within your Scalar page. And then you would set like how large, how many pixels you want um, for like how large you want that screen to be. Um, so that's a pretty cool option. It doesn't work for all pages. I think there's certain like security restrictions that have to be uh, not active for it to work, but um, you can play around with that as well. Um, I'm gonna go to the styling tab. Um, so if you want your page to have kind of like a nice background image, then um, so that it's not just this gray stuff on the sides, you can go background image I'll choose the cat. Um, and if we were creating um, a page that has like a featured image somewhere, um, we would need to select a key image here under styling in order for that image to show up. Um, like in the book splash, it tells you that you have to have the, the page's key image selected for it to show up. Um, so with this cat selected as the background image, this might look kind of, oh, sorry. So with this, um, this image, selected as my uh, as my background image and I'm in the basic layout. I'll click save and view. And now this looks kind of funky, but it looks better when you have like normal pictures. Um, you'll have at least something happening in the background of your page so it doesn't look so blank. Um, it looks a little more customized. Um, I think I want to show you 
um, a couple more kind of uh, nitpicky things. Um, oh, first, so how do you how do you create a path or a tag um, for your pages? It's really simple. You'll just go back to your edit um, button, the pencil. And at the bottom, next to the styling, which we were just looking at, um, there's this relationships tab. And you have you can see that you have path, comment, annotation, and tag. Uh, so for this path, um, if I want this page, for example, to be the beginning of a path of other pages, um, it will say, to make this page a path, choose the items that it contains. So I want this page to contain these other random pages. I'll click add selected. You can move them and put them whatever order that you want. And then I'll click save and view. So now that means that when someone's looking at this page and they get to the bottom, it will sort of prompt them to move on to the next page that's in the path. Um, and it will tell them to begin with this other page. And it will also tell them, you know, how to continue on to the next page and so on. This is a little funky because these are all just random pages that I created. But um, it will look a little obviously more streamlined when you do it uh, for, for your project. Um, and then if I want to create um, a tag, it's really simple. You'll just go back to your edit button, go back to the relationships, you'll go to this tag. Um, so you'll either want to have, you know, if you want this page to be sort of like the theme that tags other pages, um, you'll want to choose this one, choose the items that it tags, or if you want this page to be part of a theme that's on another page, then you click choose the items that tag it. Um, so I want this page to be the tag for these other pages, add selected save and view. So what that means is that now when the person when your viewer gets to the bottom of your page, they can either continue on in the path that this page is a part of, or they can jump around to one of these other pages that it is a tag of. Like so. And sorry, this looks really funky, but um, we can jump over to whatever page. And so we're not having to force the viewer to look at the pages in a certain order. Um, so those are tags and paths. Um, you'll notice though that still when we go to our book, none of these paths or pages that we've created show up anywhere. Um, so if this happens, don't panic because this is normal. If you remember what I said, uh, all of these pages and paths and media only show up in your dashboard until in the content tab until you put them somewhere where a person could actually see them. So, so for example, to add that page um, that we created, the, the cat page, um, to the actual front-facing uh, part of our website, you'll want to go to this properties tab. Um, and in this table of contents, you'll want to add item, cat test page, add selected. Um, and this properties tab is kind of helpful. You can do a lot of other things here. You can um, like make it so that your site is actually uh, like can be found in other search engines. Uh, you can make it public so that no login is required. Um, you can allow people to comment on your page in certain ways. Uh, you can also add a, lo you can add a logo, like Chapman logo or something. Um, you can add a credit so that when they click on the logo, it goes to a certain page. Um, you can edit the URL. Um, so there's a lot of just kind of nice things to that I wanted to point out. Uh, so now that I've added my cat test page to this table of contents, I'll click save and return to book. And now, so nor bear with me because normally it will appear here under your table of contents, like in this example here. So for like one of these would say cat test page. 
uh, but they're kind of they're working through a bug right now and at Scalar, and so uh, this will work when you go to do it, but it's not working for me right at this very second. Um, so, but I promise that that is how you add something to your table of contents. Um, and then to actually edit this first page, um, you just simply click on this pencil. Uh, we'll have this be a welcome page. We'll have this be um, a book splash where we feature our cat. Actually, no, I want to do the kitten. Save and view. So now when somebody comes to your book, this is the first page that they'll see. And then they can uh, go through. Oh, there it, should, there it is. Uh, then you can go through the table of contents um, to see sort of what's in the book. You can also um, you can also have that first page as part of a path that leads to all the other pages, in which case uh, there would be a little button here that would prompt the the viewer to move on to the next page. Um, there's a lot of other like nitty gritty stuff that can kind of help the viewer move through these pages in certain ways, um, but I won't get into that right at this second. It's all it's all a matter of how you organize the paths and the tags. Um, and I just want to show you one other, two other things uh, quickly, um, which is if, uh, let's, let me go back to my dashboard. I'm going to go to content, media. Let's go to our kitten image. Um, and I'm going to edit this image by clicking on the pencil. So a few things. Uh, one, if you want to, let's say, have this image as part of a map or a timeline, there's just one extra step that you would have to do when you are uploading it, um, which is you would go to the metadata tab. Um, so if you wanted this to be um, featured on a timeline, you would need to actually manually go in and enter in, in either this, the temporal or the date metadata tabs, and enter in a date um, in order for the program to read like where it should be placed on the timeline. Um, and there's some specific ways that you enter in the dates, um, which I will you can look up in the guide um, that I'm gonna share with you. Um, just as a matter of like how, how you format the date. Um, and then if you want, if you wanted this image to appear on a map, um, you would need to go in and enter in a latitude and longitude um, in this spatial metadata tab, um, just so it knows like where to place it on a map, obviously. Um, and there's a few different websites that exist online for you to be able to search like what the latitude and longitude of an address is and so forth. Uh, so you would just enter that in here. If you don't see all of these um, fields that you can enter in, you would just go to add additional metadata. Um, and it has a whole bunch of different uh, metadata fields that you just add in. Um, sometimes sometimes it only shows source and byline when you, when you first do it. Um, I'm going to cancel. Um, and then one other thing I mentioned is, um, if you remember on my La Frontera page, um, let me go to it, how like for this image, for example, what this is, is an, it's an actual image of a floor plan that I created, but then it also has these little pop-outs, um, which are called annotations in Scalar. Um, so I want to show you how to create an annotation. Um, so annotations can either be text that um, applies to one part of an image that you've uploaded or like in the example I just showed you it can be actually another image so you're actually you're annotating an image with another image um, so to annotate all you would do is go to this little paper clip icon there's my cat pickles meowing um, and you just select you sort of drag as part of the image that you want to have the annotation. Um, 
and then you can have whatever text you want. This is a cat head. You can even have it be a tag. You can add more descriptions. Uh, you'll click save, done. So now when somebody looks at this image on your page, um, like we'll go back to our test page. So now when somebody looks at this image, um, it will have this sort of faint box around it, which will sort of prompt them to mouse over it to see your, your text. Um, if you have questions about how to do the image within the image, uh, let me know. Uh, it's sort of, um, it's a little bit more complicated uh, and I won't, I don't want to waste time in, unless someone is interested. Um, but I will say that, you know, if we go back to, for example, our cat test page, our annotation doesn't show up. And so we just have to go in and select that we want that annotation to be visible. So if I go back to edit that page, go to the little, um, like, uh, what's this called? Like the nut and bolt thing. Um, it will show that I selected this to be medium, right, to have the title, and then here you would just click the little I um, to have it so that that annotation will show up on your page. Save and view. So now when somebody comes to this page, that little box is there and they can read your annotation. Um, you can also annotate videos. So for example, if I wanted little uh, text box to appear at certain points in this video, you can annotate. Um, you can do that by doing the annotation. Um, yeah, so I think that that is sort of the nuts and bolts of wanted, what I wanted to go over for this demonstration. Like I said, there's a lot I did not cover. So if you ever have any questions, please just email me. Um, it's just my last name, B-O-C-I-N-S-K-I at chapman.edu. Um, and I'll be happy to either help you or I can ask the people who created Scalar to help us in figuring out whatever your problem or question is. Um, I also want to point out if you click on this little, um, the question mark, and you go to user's guide, they have a complete user's guide um, for how to create everything in Scalar. So everything that I just went over, if you want to kind of go back and actually read instructions rather than listening to me say it, you can do that. Um, these, this is an actually, this is a really helpful user guide. It's not like one of those user guides that are not helpful at all. It's It goes through and gives you step-by-step -step instructions for um, everything that I just went over. So if you have any questions, you can also look it up in there. Um, you can also search for, in all Scalar books, you can search for terms or titles. Um, so like in this test page that I created, someone could search this book for cat. And it would bring up all of the pages in media uh, that have that word in it. So you can search for your question in the user book or just email me and I'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for, for watching this. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too boring or tedious. Normally I would do this in person, uh, but I happen to have class at the exact same time that you have class. Uh, so hence the video. Um, also hope that you enjoyed my cat videos and images. Okay, so good luck. <laughs>